exist even though I'm so stressed out Everything just feels like a test that I feel so depressed when I can't seem to get out But something deep inside won't let me quit I swear that I'm inspired by all this shit Tell me that I can't and I won't That's what guides me the most You lies, I'll do what I want By thirst, I'm inspired by worth. I desire your worst, so you can just hide while I work. I ain't tired, you first. I write a second, third verse about the lies you go disperse. You never did, sh- I know it hurts. But something deep inside won't let me quit. I swear that I'm inspired by all this. Shit. Tell me that I can't and I won't. That's what guides me the most. You lies, I'll do what I want. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Crime and Justice. Before we start, I have to play my little video. I always play for Sebastian. Always. Hi there everyone, if you're watching on replay, please give this video a like, it helps with the analytics, so I'm told, please share, and please leave me a comment, what are your views, what are your opinions, all opinions and views are welcome. Be good or not bad. Doesn't matter what side you want to take. You can take CP, KP, Seth, whatever. But I take Team Sebastian. 
all the way. And if one of the parents step out of line, then I'm going to talk about it. Right. I was, uh, I've been watching, I wasn't on last night. I was a bit tired, so I thought I'm not going on. Plus, there wasn't anything new. I've discussed everything I needed to get through. So I put, you know, I'll have a night off. But then today I'm sitting there and I'm watching TV, YouTube. And I thought, I'm going live tonight. Because there's little bits. I didn't actually read the whole of the exhibits the other night. <clears throat> I wish I had now because one of them is really bad, quite bad. I think. Well, they all are. They all are what they've gone through. And still is going, still are going through. You know what I mean? So, it's like they're not taking any war notice of the warnings they are being given. So, can you not understand why they have done what they've done? You know what I mean? It's ridiculous. And the only person losing out in this, the only person losing out in this, is this lad. Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers. Say my name. Sebastian Wayne Drake. Drake Rogers. He's the one who's missing. But from what I understand, there are some channels out there that are determined to sabotage anyone talking about Sebastian. Right? Now, what I've learned, this injunction that they've got put they're putting out. When we don't know. When you know what I mean, we don't know. Right. Because I was supposed to do an interview yesterday, but someone made a st stupid remark on a ch channel saying someone said something about oh they've got they've had an RSVP or something like that to this press release. And this other YouTuber said it's a public right of way they can't RSVP people. Yeah, they can. <laughs> yeah, like, if they want RSVP people, they can. Right? There's nothing stopping you standing outside of that area and listening and watching. But you just won't be allowed into the immediate area. So if they want to RSVP, they can RSVP. Anyone. So this person's gone, well, I'm just going to organise a marching band thing to go along, to to go past. Well, that got out. And that was only, I believe that was said as a joke. But they weren't taking no chances, so they cancelled the press release yesterday. When it's going to happen, I do not know. I heard something about Friday. I don't know how sure that how true that is. Right, I don't know if that's the day they go to court, take it to court or what. I don't know. I hope not because I've got to go out Friday. I've got to go and pick my grandson up, so I'll miss it. Well, I wouldn't miss it. I've got it on my phone. And then, but I wouldn't be able to go live on here with it. So if that is the case, then I'll have to go live when I get back from picking my grandson up and giving him his tea. Once I've done all that, I'll come live. It might be earlier than 8 o'clock, it might be later than 8 o'clock, but I'll be live. So that press release was cancelled. Oh, God, God, God. Just got a point. Not 
but I've been watching videos, YouTube channels, and people are still, as I said, still going after Is it Britney? Still going after it. Still going after BHB. Now, I have pinned in the comments, BHB, go fund me. Now, as I said before, there's times I don't like BHB. And she probably wouldn't like my channel. Right? But that is her choice and that is my choice. But when someone is going through such a... From, through such an injustice, which I believe it is, then we should help. Because she's out there putting posters out, she goes out and she puts posters out, and she lives in, I believe, is it Florida? Or somewhere like that? And she goes to Tennessee and she'll put posters out and everything. She's there, out there for Sebastian. And people are determined to stop her. Why? Why are people so determined to stop people talk, even doing a live on Sebastian? Why? I don't get that. It's a missing 15-year-old lad with autism. Everyone should be working together. The other week I did a live where I talked about how Seth and Katie should work together. And that is what YouTubers should be doing. They should be working together. It's ridiculous now. Because I'm not taking any notice of these injunctions. Of, or of the possible injunction that is going ahead with them. Which they are going ahead with. So. Anyway. I was watching Mr. E, crime podcast, something like that, it's today. And I had two short clips and I was in hysterics, right? I'd be in hysterics if it was about Seth as well, but <laughs> it was so funny. And I'm going to show you those clips because you'll, you'll have a laugh. You will have a laugh, right? But I'm also going to go through the document, the exhibits, and, and we'll go through the two parts that I didn't read out, which the one was about Nick the Hat, and the other one, the last part, was about a you another TikToker, which I believe is on YouTube as well. And they went after her just because she supported Certain people, really, and she didn't agree with what they were saying. They didn't agree with what she was saying, so they've gone after her. So we're going to look at that as well. And that's quite long. And I'll show you those two funny clips. They are funny. And that is down to Mrs. E of Crime, Cast, Crime Podcast, or whatever it's called, I can't remember. I'll tell you in a minute what the channel is called. It's called Mr. E's Crime Cast. Right? And I'll be showing you those two clips because I think it's so flipping funny. I thought it was funny when I heard it in, when I heard the court, when you heard him talking in court and he said it. My head, literally, I was doing my 5D diamond art when I was watching the court thing. And when he said that one word, it was like my head just shut up and went, Did he really say that? Did he? <laughs> right? <clears throat> so, it is funny. And it's funny the way, no, Seth did the side eye in an interview <laughs> towards Tony. <laughs> oh, God, Tony, you're in for it. You're going to get it off Seth for that. Uh, because Seth just gave some one hell of a side eye. Like, really? I think he said to make this crystal clear or something like that. And 
set to scale in this good, dry, good side eye. And so to say, really? Fair play, so funny. But you see, the thing is, as well, Seth, I'm telling you, you can laugh about that. I laugh about that. So, because it is funny. So, I'm going to be showing you that little clip today. So, first of all, I would fall, because we'll come up to eight months. I'm going to show you, oh, apparently, News 2 channel, they're getting it now through these hate channels, these YouTube hate channels. They're getting it in the neck now because they're covering Sebastian. Really? I haven't heard them because I don't watch those channels, but I've heard other people saying this. I need to see proof to actually believe it, but then again, I don't because I know what these channels are like. Hang on. Go back. Let's put this up for you. I'll take that picture again in a minute. Now, this was the news report when it was seven months missing. And I thought we'd go back just that last month because it's now coming up on the 26th, which is next Saturday, will be one um, eight months missing. Eight months. The 26th will be eight months. And I would think the 28th would be eight months to the day. I'm not sure. But 26th of October is eight months missing. So, all right, let's go back. Because we have Seth talking this as well. So here we go. Now, seven months later, and several agencies and groups have searched for 15 year old Sebastian Rogers, but there's been no new information from law enforcement. News 2's Caitlin Quisenberry spoke with Sebastian's biological father about the search timeline and its progress. Seven months have come and gone. A search for missing Sumner County teen Sebastian Rogers. 15 year old Sebastian Rogers. He believes Sebastian is still alive. With no sight of missing teen Sebastian Rogers. Seven months. It's almost been. You know, after six months, I mean, it's just like, I didn't, I thought we would have found him by now. Month one was, it was intense for the first time. It, there was a lot of people that were on board trying to find Sebastian. And then after that, it okay. just, it became a circus. 15-year-old Sebastian Rogers okay, went missing from show. his home in Hendersonville on February 26th. Several agencies spent more than a week searching the area around his home, including a landfill in Kentucky. Before scaling the search back, investigative format. You're still committed to finding Sebastian and bringing him safe. No leads, no details to indicate that Sebastian is not alive. But community members continued bringing awareness by handing out flyers and posters. Following the search for Riley Strain, the United Cajun Navy came in to help, but in less than a week, pulled back their search efforts after several threats. Just because you pick up a phone and start recording, you can either help with that or you can hinder. Since they scaled back the search, Sumner County law enforcement have not, not reported any new information. You get tips and stuff that were coming in, you know if law enforcement was following up on them or not. And now that we have Dog's team, he has a whole team of attorneys, lawyers, uh, <clears throat> 
private investigators. The FBI recently announced a $50,000 reward for information following that announcement. Dog the Bounty Hunter joined in on the search, raising that reward to $100,000. But for now, Seth Rogers holds on to the hope that his son is still alive. And every day I wake up hoping that I get the phone call today that, hey, we found Sebastian. And clings to the 15 years of memories he shared with Sebastian. I remember changing diapers. I remember making him bottles. I remember taking him swimming. I remember taking him fishing. In Nashville, Caitlin Quisenberry, News 2. Right. That was at seven months. Right. People Come searching on. for a missing teen. That was at seven months. This one was what? A couple of weeks ago now. So let's listen back to court. Dog, the bounty hunter, and Sebastian Rogers' father filed an injunction against two social media influencers in Pennsylvania. They claim the YouTuber and TikToker are obstructing the search for Sebastian Rogers. News 2's Caitlin Quisenberry breaks down statements included in this lawsuit. An 18-page injunction backed by a 323-page list of exhibits and testimonies was filed last Friday. The plaintiffs include Dog, the bounty hunter, Sebastian Rogers' father, Seth, and the father's spokesperson, Tony Mathis, as well as YouTuber Andrew Griffin. The lawsuit alleges two influencers, a YouTuber and TikToker, created a, quote, coordinated campaign of cyber harassment, false allegations, and witness intimidation. The lawsuit ties back to the search for missing Sumner County teen Sebastian Rogers. He was last seen in February at his family home in Hendersonville. Dog the Bounty Hunter joined the search for Sebastian in September and added $75,000 to the reward for information, now totaling $125,000. The that is a lot of money. The influencers encourage their subscribers to flood tip lines and law enforcement with false reports, have threatened Dog the Bounty Hunter and other searchers, allegedly slowing down critical travel and coordination for search efforts. A spokesperson for Sebastian's father said one of the influencers threatened to, quote, take him down while sebastian's dad wrote quote i'm fighting against a coordinated group of individuals who seem more interested in destroying me than helping to find my boy he went on to say quote if my son dies out there they'll have blood on their hands the lawsuit urges the influencers to stop any disparaging comments about the plaintiffs remove any previous video content doing so and ask their subscribers to follow their example. A press conference was scheduled for today in Pennsylvania, where the influencers live, to address the filed lawsuit. But according to At Night Private Intelligence Agency, the conference was postponed due to, quote, reports of individuals arranging for a marching band to interrupt the conference, along with other suspicious messages. In a letter included in the court documents, the lawyer for the YouTuber writes the allegations are, quote, baseless and without legal foundation. News 2 reached out to all parties involved and has not heard back. If you have any information to the whereabouts of Sebastian Rogers, you can find a list of numbers to call on our website at WKRN.com. Right. Let's just stop there. So, that's where we are so far. They are not listening, and if they are, their members aren't. Right? It's not saying it's them doing all this. Uh, intimidation and harassment. It could be, that could be. Their members, their followers. Right? So, they can say, but I haven't done that. But you have said some stuff on your lives. They've got those videos. They've got all those lives, all those videos, the clips, the sections, everything of it. Right? Like, I was watching... One of these YouTubers that 
was put in this injunction, right, because of the bullying she's been getting. And she broke down. She broke down on her life. Right? And because she was reading comments on her life that people had been leaving, I think it was on her community page or somewhere, right, had left her. Because apparently on her life she did, they were saying she was tired, she stays up extremely late to do her lives so that she gets it in the timeline for her viewers, right? Like, I could stay, if I had to, if I stayed up to get it in line for my viewers, I would have to stay up till about, maybe about 2, 2 a.m., 3 a.m. in the morning. I can't do that. There's some nights I could, some nights I can't sleep, and I could quite easily come on here and do a live at 3 a.m. in the morning, because I'm wide awake. But she does these lives, and anyway, so she was tired, she's got two young kids. She doesn't come on camera very often because of her children. But I've noticed now, she's now blurring out the background. So if her children do go past her, they're not being seen on the camera. It's all blurred out. And they're saying, oh, she's using, she's on D-R-U-G-S. She needs to get help and all this. I'm thinking, no, she was just tired. And because she went off her live, because she was having technical issues, she'd been having technical issues all night, she'd been having technical issues through the week, where she was losing sound and things like that, right? And she went off and she lost sound, so she went off to come back in, right? But then couldn't get back on. It wasn't letting her back in. Finally, after she got back in, she noticed her two panel people up on panel had gone. And all, all her views had gone. Right? And uh, so she just, she, she deleted, uh, she didn't delete it, she put it in private. Because it was a ish show. You know what I mean? So I'm not putting that out there. On YouTube, it's, it was utterly crap. So she privated it. She didn't delete it, she privated it. And people are having a go at her about that. Now, if she did come out and said, uh, uh, accusing her of lying, and all this lie, no, you weren't lying, you are probably just too tired, or you probably needed uh, or too much of your D-R-U-G-S, you was doing the nod. You know what I mean? She wasn't doing the nod. She'd be looking at her phone. At one stage, she leant down, and it's quite easily done, where you could lean down to scratch her leg. And as she's gone down, she hit the mic. And it's easily done. Could happen to me. My mic is quite close to me. So if I'm bending down, sometimes I have to move my mic out of the way. Right? To bend down. That's how close I am to my mic. Because I like to be that close to my mic. Some days I sit back, I'm still pretty close. But if I lean forward to scratch my leg, I'm going to hit my mic. And that's what she did. And that's what happened. Oh no, she was on the yard. Meaning she'd taken some G-R-U-G-S. And that's the side effect of taking them. Do they not know what that could do to her? and her family, and her children. It was despicable. And she left, she was in tears. And even one of her panel members was literally in tears as well, reading what had been put up. Because it was vile, it was disgusting, there's no need for it. If you don't want to watch her show, then don't watch it. If you don't, like I say, if you don't want to watch mine, Click off. I don't care. Right? But to put comments up like they were, 
was, but now yeah, what she does, she takes even a mugs at all, takes screenshots of all the comments first before deleting them. Because then she's got the proof of what is being said. Right? And it was, I've, I was nearly in tears myself for her. So it just shows I'm not, her, the members are still going after her. It was disgusting. It was vile. So, as I said, I've got the Bullon bit has got a separate court case going, right? With four protection orders. And so she's got a separate court case going. That is separate from this injunction. And I thought about it at first. I thought, well, hold on. She's doing a, um, a GoFundMe page. For her lawyer, right? Why can't they? But then I realised that's a separate case, separate from this. Yeah, it may be about because of her covering Sebastian, but it's still a separate case. So please, the link is in the description in the chat, pinned to the top. If you can, please donate. If you can't, then you can't. The link is on my ex, and I noticed a lot of people had gone and seen that today. So please, if you can donate, please donate. I can't at the moment, but I will be at the end, I think it's at the end of the month or the beginning of the month. I'll be able to. Right? And I will, because this is such an injustice she's going through. She's gone through a, a, a hurricane, her Helen and, and stuff like that. Uh, property outside was damaged, right? Um, she had no electric, she had no water. She was having to stay at her mum's for a while until they got electric and water back on. So she's going. She's going through a rough time. She puts a brave face on when she's doing a live. But it wouldn't surprise me if, when she's on her own, when she's not on a live or whatever, she breaks down because I know I would. I'm a strong woman. But if someone come after me like they're going after these two YouTubers constantly, it would break you down. Right? Now, every people are saying, well, uh, she's a bit hypocritical because she's fighting against her freedom of speech. Well, she's doing the same to these YouTubers. No, she's not. All they are asking for is that they stop all this horrendous cyberbullying, intimidation, harassment. You can talk about Sebastian, you can talk about her channel. She even said on the live, hold on, I'm going to pull it up. Um, she said it today. If you want to critique or criticise my channel, then do so. Right? She has no problem with that. I'm trying to find it. Ah, let's see where it is. Here. Right. Let's start from there. Hold on. I've just got to stream it up here. Just got to put it up on here. Right. Anything else? When the issue. I'm um, we'll just go back just today.
go uh -huh. real life. That ship sailed. There's no, from my understanding, there's no stopping this from going forward. So, um, you know, Cherish, it's nice to see you. Tar Heel, it's nice to see you. We are the vo uh, Cody's voice. Good morning. Just me. Hugs and kisses, my love. Hugs and kisses. <clears throat> Busy mom, Holly, thank you for the emails, by the way. Um, the real me too is here. We got to see her. I tried to catch you before you went to court. It's nice to see you, my love. Gigi for life. Lisa C, it's nice to see you. Don't forget. Friday at 8, we'll be getting an update of inside the courtroom, and we'll get an insight on the stuff we were not able to hear. There's been a few things, including this um, substance abuse dealer out there that apparently she was, you know, fooling around with uh, for substances, and they- He's talking about another case here. Off camera, you know, the people that were in the courtroom could hear it, but the people in the public watching from TV could not. I'm interested to hear what was said about that. Nice to see you, Outer Banks. Uh, Pebbles, good morning, my love. Just careful to be. Plea to my attorney. Um, we're not pocketing money. We're not buying ourselves cars with money. We are literally going to represent ourselves and represent this cause to the fullest extent allowable by law. And uh, anybody that would like to um, help out with that, you're, please, uh, God bless you for that. You guys know that this has been a, a very dis uh, difficult situation I have been put in. And uh, quite frankly, once this is over, it'll be done. You know, it'll be done across this country. Once this is all put to in this, th we walk this path. This will be done. We are we are getting this stuff where we can finally be a true crime channel and not have all of these people uh, doxing my um, audience, doxing my mods, doxing me, bullying all of us. We're going to literally put. Thank you. Not really a dog toy. Uh, put all this nonsense to an end. Uh, not only for us, but for the future content creators that uh, will be coming on to this platform that doesn't deserve to be treated the way I was treated or many other content creators are treated for believing the way that they believe. So um, very thankful. Um, you know, I can't really get dive into it. My message is just stop. Just stop. Do you think a judge is going to sit here and look at this and say so you had an opportunity all this time to stop this bad behavior and you continue and you're going to continue. He's going to have no choice but to put a preliminary injunction in um, until he can find out the facts of the case because they just won't stop. They think they are entitled to continue to do this. And, and the more that they do, the more evidence that they're, they're providing uh, for us. So uh, just keep sending all the evidence that you guys have. I know a lot of people have been um, invested in this, trying to get this to stop right along with me. Um, if you guys see anything, you guys can send that over. If you are a victim of this um, organization, this enterprise, uh, please reach out. And I'm serious. Please reach out. Just, you know, you don't have to put your name on the record. You don't have to be a participant or a plaintiff in this. And you maybe you don't want justice for yourself or you're terrified from the repercussions of it. Sometimes one of the hardest things to do in life is the right thing. If you have been a victim of these people in this campaign, please reach out to Nick, okay? Doxing at atnight.agency. There have been so many people that have come forward from this organization that have underwent exactly what we have done, gone through. Uh, people that you wouldn't imagine. Um, and it's sad. It's sad that they've been able to rain this terror down on so many people and use this coordinated uh, playbook that they've been using for quite some time. And if you have, um, if you want help, you don't have to suffer in silence. Okay. That's the messaging. You don't have to suffer in silence. Um, I can tell you that there are people that are on this lawsuit that don't really care so much about Bullhorn Betty, but they understand the cause. Um, you know, there are people that, um, have stepped forward to provide evidence 
that absolutely are anti Betty that support this cause. Um, it's illegal. It is an enterprise and they are being paid to do these things. And so uh, they've been paid quite a bit to do these things. And most of these people are, um, you know, criminals. They obviously don't mind breaking the law and we need to put a stop to it. And the only way we're going to put a stop to it is everybody coming together. Right. So she said it herself, if you don't like her, that's fine. And I know a lot of people don't like her. I don't like her views all the time. But when she does talk about Sebastian, and I mean talk about Sebastian, like when she first came on it, she was so into it and she was getting all this information. Her mugs were helping her, everything. And for people to, if you don't like someone, just walk away. You don't have to sit and watch and leave nasty, vile, vicious comments. Because they are vile. I always say, if you don't want, if you wouldn't say it to your mother, then don't say it at all. If you wouldn't say it to your mother, then don't say it at all. Right? And I would never say any of them things to my mother. When my mother was alive, right? If we'd have just said one word back to my my mum, like, no mum, that's not what, boom. She'd have clipped our ears and gone lit up on us like a fecking match. You know what I mean? She get burnt our backsides. So we grew up knowing treat your elders with respect. If you've got nothing else to say, don't say it at all. If you don't want to say it, if you won't say it to your mother, don't say it at all. Right? Simple. Yet there's people out there who are very vicious and very nasty. So I want to look at this document again. And I can pull it up. Right. And because we, we did go through it, but I kind of like rushed through it at the end. And I shouldn't have, shouldn't have, because there's some interesting bits now there's one part and it was uh i can't remember i know who it is i can't think hung right we'll just go past all this gonna look at that in a minute um, that's Julie Valenti. I think it's before her. Very, very interesting, he said. Bullhorn. No, hang. Who's this? Oh, no, Britney. That's Britney. So it's just something interesting he said. So I want to find it and I will go through it. Oh, listen, uh, Andrew Griffin. Uh, let's go through this. I think we're coming up to it. Nope. No, 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 no,
Ich bin ja der Beginning. Oh God. So much to go, we went through on these papers, it was just... Oh, it is, we're coming up to his now, so we'll read it from the beginning, right? There's a few pages of it. Some of it said, right, Declaration of Hong. Oh, share this tab. Right, we did go through this the other night. I know we did. But it's just something that he said. And we're going to, uh, when we get there, I'll stop it. Hong, du being duly sworn, accordingly to law, hereby dispose and affirm the following. Hong, Residing in, declare under penalty of perjury under the laws of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and pursuant to that the foregoing is true and correct to the best of my knowledge and belief. On or about August the 30th, I authorised the deployment of Act Nodes Rapid Response Team, RRT, to allocate additional resources, resources at the start of the investigation into the disappearance of Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers. As managing partner at night, I recognise that the RRT's deployment was necessary. Hold on. And I've got a glass of juice because I knew I'd be reading a lot. It was necessary, necessary due to signs that emerged early on. Signals that were very coordinated attempts to interfere with the search. The urgency of the situation grew even more apparent as we saw how certain individuals, especially barbecue lady and grannies watching, were consistently working to do two derailed efforts to find Sebastian. Reports from Seth Rogers, Seb Sebastian's father, added to the growing list of red flags. He said that Chris Proudfoot, Sebastian's stepfather, had tried to sp persuade him to get the story straight about the events leading up to Sebastian's mis disappearance. Now that got me, why would the... How can he get his story straight? His story is, he was at work. He was at work from 7pm till 7am. He knew nothing about what happened on the Sunday. He never phoned Sebastian on the weekend when he was with his mum. Because that was his time with his mum. Why? So he, he never phoned him on the weekend when, he, when it was time he spent with his mum. Sorry, I'm just having a bit of my juice. This behaviour only deepens suspicions that the proud feet um, people weren't just involved, but might lead but might actually be concealing critical details that could help bring Sebastian home. By September 2nd, 2024, at around 7 at night, 7 a.m., at night was officially retained to assist in the search and rescue Sebastian. To tackle this case effectively, I authorised our team to go beyond typical measures. This involved assembling a specialised group composed of civilians licensed private investigators and operatives situated across the US. We plan for anticipation, anticipatory area support and established search and rescue response funds with surveillance authorised in multiple states. These locations include Tennessee, Kentucky, Illinois, Wisconsin, Virginia, Puerto Rico, Alaska, California, that part is particularly focusing on sex trafficking operations. Florida, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, New York, Arkansas, Mississippi, Alabama, Texas, and Oklahoma. Acknow entered this agreement with two clear objectives. Find Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers and bring him home. 
on show that anyone responsible for his disappearance would be prosecuted and convicted. We quickly discovered that the search was being undermined by coordinate coordinated smear campaign. Several content creators seem to have made it their goal to discredit anyone trying to find Sebastian. Luckily not me. These weren't just random individuals, these were known personalities including Queen Bee, SF Investigates, T Rev, Dolly, Dolly Vision, April Chapman, don't know who that one is, and others who actively spread defamatory narratives online. The tactics were sophisticated using tools like bots and phony social media accounts to amplify attacks. They even coordinate with each other to trim videos and take statements out of tech context, as we done against An- as was done against Andra Griffin. Yeah, you can take an hour-long video or two-hour-long video or three-hour-long, and just take little clips out of it, put them all together, and make a little video. You're not seeing the whole video. You're not. You're not seeing the whole video. So it's being took out of context. They even coordinated with each other to trim videos and take statements out of context, as was done. Why? This this distorted versions of events were then used to sway court decisions, including protective order against Miss Griffin, based on selectively edited footage. Similar methods were used against Nick who was forbidden from having any contact with Kate and Chris people, spoke only having minimal communication with them, most of it being from me or others in the agency. In addition to these incidents, I was involved in group chat with Stephen Fisher and the peoples. One group chat including Fisher, Kate, Kate people, while other, another included Fisher and C people. Right. So Stephen Fisher is the private investigator, I believe. Is it him? Yeah. So he's acting as their spokesperson as well, I would imagine. Being as he's in on all the phone calls. During this chat, there was just discussions related to the case. And I question, questioned Fisher's claim on social media that he was retained by the people. The commu- communication raised cons- concerns, especially given the ongoing efforts to discredit those assisting in the search for Sebastian. On September 7th at 10.36pm ET, I text C. Pride for Katie People and Stephen Fisher regarding the ongoing situation. We drew a correct copy of the group chat with Kay, Katie and Chris, Chris P. Foot and Stephen Fisher is attached to these two and corporate reference hearing. The following day, September the 8th at 1.26pm, I reached out to see people, Chris people, again to ask if he would be available on Tuesday for a meeting with Doug and the team. Shortly after 1.34pm, Miss Nick and I had a call with Mr. People since the tip line was linked to my phone. A true and correct copy of the conversation history with Chris, Chris People and KT People is attached to T2, incorporated by reference herein. During the call, Mr. People stated that he would involve his friends in law enforcement. Why does he always have to have his friends? Involve his friends. He's not going, I've got to have a word with some of the county sheriff's office. Or the captain or the deputy or whoever. He's saying he would have to involve his friends. Alright, I'll highlight it. Right? So he's got friends in some of the county sheriff's office, I see. Hmm. He did call back, but I chose not to answer based on the advice 
off times ooh. Off. Yeah. Off. Well, Forest Council, as I mentioned, of law enforcement connections made it unsafe to proceed without legal oversight. That same day, I text Katie people and asked if she was afraid of her husband, suggesting that if she wanted to speak privately away from him, she should reply with the number two and then delete the text. A true and correct copy of the conversation with Katie, with Kate people is attached to you as, to, as Exhibit 3. On September 9th, I attempted to contact Mr. P. Foot twice, along with Mr. Chapman, dog, but received a text from him saying not to call back. There was an accidental pocket dial that day, but no further contact was made. There's no, there has been no communication with the people since that time. Even Julia Valenti faced false accusations as posing as a TBI agent. It's got more sense than that. She's a captain in the army. It became evident that the PFOCs were using legal manoeuvres not just to protect themselves, but to undermine the investigation and cast doubt on those generally working to find Sebastian. During our investigation, we uncovered financial connections among those create, these create, content creators and a broad network of individuals who were profiting from spreading misinformation. Donation through YouTube super chats and subscriptions showed a significant flow of funds, some of which were tied directly to individuals with invested with vested interest in keeping the investigation off track. For instance, Tony Mathis, who became a target of barbecue lady. Wrath as she admitted to wanting to take Tony down. When efforts to discredit him failed, they resorted to accusing Mr. Rogers of heinous acts, even attempting to cast doubt on his alibi for the night of Sebastian's disappearance while claiming cover ups and fabricated time cards at the county jail. These allegations were baseless and only served only to divert attention from the real issues. The tactics used in this case go far beyond ordinary harassment. They which represent a well-organised effort, effort to derail the investigation and to silence those involved. Evidence suggests a sophisticated attempt to distract, disrupt and demoralise, spanning state lines and involving numerous content creators, lawyers and enablers. Adding to the inter intimidation tactics, it was an incident at my home on October with the White Chevy, right? And here it says, the driveway pull, the truck pulls into my driveway. The driver notices the cameras and backs up slow, slightly. The man exits the vehicle, leaving the truck open and walks towards the front door. He glances through the garage windows. He peers into the dining room window facing the kitchen. The man reaches the front door. He knocks on the door and rings the bell. He notices the security camera and leaves. On his way out, he glances again through the dining room window. He checks the garage window once more before driving away. A middle-aged man in a black under-armour polo and car pants left his truck door open as he approached my front door. He peered through the windows and appeared to have an MDT. That's like... Something like similar like what the um, police use in their cars, like a tablet or something like that. I immediately go nine one one nine one one. We are working under the belief that Sebastian is still alive and is coordinated deficit to derail blah blah, assisting in keeping him hidden, or even enabling those responsible for his disappearance to avoid justice. As part of our investigation, I had access to several phone calls invo involving Chris people and Katie people and Seth Rogers. These conversations were deeply unsettling. In one instance, just after day Sebastian's disappearance, now this he said he had he had access to several phone calls. He didn't say he he was on the phone. He had access, so it was a recording he'd obviously been listening to. 
in one instance, just days after Sebastian's disappearance, Katie, Kate Peafoot clearly fused made harsh remarks about the situation. What followed was even more alarming. See Peafoot angrier than I had ever heard made direct threats against Mr Rogers and talked about spreading harmful rumours regarding Sebastian. Another call I was present for, C. Peafoot declared, You'll never find Sebastian and warned us to keep away from him, his family and anyone connected to him. Now this phone call he was present for. It was unnerving to hear such a statement, especially since Sebastian had gone missing after being last seen. Now this is the bit that gets me. Sebastian had gone missing after being last seen with Chris and Katie at dinner the night before. But it doesn't say Chris was coming out of the restaurant with them on the night before. It's just Katie and Sebastian. So, was Chris at that dinner on the Sunday evening? Did the Sumner County Sheriff's Office do their due diligence and actually speak to the staff that was there on the Sunday evening? Did they speak to any staff members who'd been there, who'd worked during the whole month? Just in case Chris had been back at all. Because he's stating he hadn't been back home since February the 5th and he didn't come home till February the 26th or something like that. But I heard, and it's, it's not been confirmed, that Someone's daughter works at the Texas Roadhouse and saw Chris there with Katie and Sebastian two weeks before he went missing. And the reason it stood out is because once again Chris played his face up because the steak wasn't cooked long enough or good enough and made a show. Now, when you make a show in a restaurant, it's going to stick in your head. It's going to stay in your head for a while. So she remembers him being there two weeks earlier. Right? The following Sunday after that, Seth would have had Sebastian. Then the weekend he goes missing, apparently... From what another YouTuber's found out, he was off. He wasn't working Thursday, Friday, Saturday or Sunday. So was Chris at that restaurant? He may not have been staying at the home. He may have been at his mum's. So was he at that restaurant that night? So, that's just all I wanted to, uh, to look at, right, and then there's this one near the end, so we go right down, uh, oh no, I want to look at Nick's, don't we, see these are the exhibits I was talking about, right, Right, these are all exhibits that they spoke about. This is just all the news things. But like I said, if you want to read the whole lot of this yourself, then go to my Discord account. Hi, Karen from Massachusetts. 
I heard he was out to dinner on Valentine's Day with Kate, but I don't know what West, what restaurant. Well, I I just said two weeks before Sebastian went missing, that would have been Katie's weekend again, right? Two weeks before he went missing, and someone's daughter or granddaughter works at the Texas Roadhouse. And she said she remembers him being there because he played his face up again because his steak or whatever he ordered was not cooked to his liking. And they got up and walked out. So if he was there two weeks earlier on the weekend when Sir Katie had Sebastian, I'm knowing... What we know now, that apparently he was not at work on the Thursday, the Friday, the Saturday or Sunday. You're telling me, in them four days, he will not come home? Even if it meant staying at his mum's? He will come home. He wouldn't care about law enforcement because he's got law enforcement on his side, hasn't he? He's got friends, as we just read. He's got friends in law enforcement. He's admitted to himself he's got friends in law enforcement. So they're not going to say anything, are they? So yes, he's going to come home. So. We have Massachusetts in the house. i seen you. Oh, what's. YouTube channel was I watching and your name come up on it. Was it Mr. Ease? I think it was Mr. Ease. I was watching on replacing. I seen your name come up in chat. I'm sure it was Mr. Ease. I thought, oh, I know that name. Anyway, so. Oh, God's sake, I'm trying to do it wrong up here. So you've just heard, you read what I've just read, you read, heard what I've just read, I contact my friends, my friends in law enforcement. So, yeah, he's got friends in law enforcement, so they're not going to stop him coming back to see his wife, just because apparently there might be, there might be we don't know, it hasn't been confirmed. It's just... Something I realised when I realised he hadn't been back since after when he said about the belt incident and him being 15 years old and embarrassed, I knew that happened this year sometime in January. Because then in February, he went to down to his works with the five-wheeler and stayed down there. Right? He used to use the five-wheeler anyway. But this time, he was staying down there on the weekends. And when Seth had Sebastian, Seth said himself, Katie would go down there for the weekends to him. So, I think Chris was home those four days. Yeah, then I go and report on him. I know if he turns up, then I go, and say, Oh, you shouldn't be here. Right? So, I really believe now Chris was at the house. I really do. Who's either at the house or is that his mummy's? Because they don't like us talking about his mum and his stepfather. He gets very angry when we mention his mum and stepfather, stepdaddy. Get to your mummy and daddy, Chris, go on. Right? And, um, oh, I'm just done finding your boat on. Anyway. I want to read, not so much Nick, because Nick, everyone can change, right? 
Everyone can be bad, do something bad in their life, but change. Yep. Yeah. I no, I'm gonna So Uncle Taco is the uncle. He's actually Sebastian's uncle. It wasn't just a name that was given to him. Because you know how sometimes parents will say, like, let me, there's a, a family friend, yeah? A family friend. And they, after a while, they start calling him Uncle Taco and things like that. He wasn't anything like that. He was actually Sebastian's uncle. But this guy, hmm, was he in court with Chris the other week? Oh, wow. Who is that guy? So Mr. E won't put his picture out there because he don't want to incriminate, put someone's picture out there. But he's the guy who was trying to get into Hong's house. Right? So why shouldn't his picture be out there? You know what makes me think? Look at his the shoulders. Right? It looks like he's got some sort of body coverage on. Like a a stab proof vest or something kind because it seems really bulky here on the shoulders and bulky round here. Yeah. It seems let's see if I can get you a bit closer. No. It's not going to let me. Uh, let's go back up a bit. But let's just try a little bit. It does look like some. I thought that when I first seen this, I thought that looks really bulky on the shoulders, right to the sleeves. That looks really bulky. And round here. It looks bulky. They are saying it's Stephen Fisher, P.I. I don't know what he looks like. Oh, hold on, I do know what he looks like. Hold on. Uh, I'll find his picture in a minute. Let's have a look. Hmm. Now he's got more, but then again, I don't know how old this picture is. Right? This is the only picture I've got. I don't, don't know how old that picture is. But. No, hold on. Right, let's share this first. Right, that's the only picture I've got of him. Like I said, don't know how old it is. Now I go back to exhibits. Hmm, possible. It's possible it could be him. We need a more up to date picture of Stephen Fisher. Could law enforcement not do, um, Face recognition on that because if Stephen Fisher is a private investigator, would he not have to have his photo taken and all that lot for the records? All right, all right, let's get back to that. Let me share this. Would he not have to have his photo taken for the records for? 
being a ZZ PI. Yeah, and someone actually went onto the Tennessee Private Investigators app, the app, punched in his details, his uh, license number, and nothing come up. Nothing came up. She so went onto the site and punched in his private investigating. All the details they asked, like if they wanted his name, but she put in his PI license number and nothing came up. But I'd like to see a more updated picture of Stephen Fisher before I'd say it was him. You know what I mean? But when you look at that picture, I, as soon as I was thinking, I thought, is he wearing some sort of body vest? Because those shoulders seem really, like, padded up. Like, you know, when you put that vest on, you, the, the Velcro up, don't they, up on the shoulders and around the sides, yeah? And that's where it looks bulky on the shoulders. And then when you look at the body, Uh, when you look at this body, it seems bulky. <coughs> <coughs> Stephen Fisher, being a PI, would have that MD thing, wouldn't he? That piece of equipment in his car, possibly. Not saying he's him. I need to see a more updated picture of Peter Fisher. Because the only one we've got it's this one. But we don't know when that was took. Christ, I could put a picture of my bus pass. Um, my my ID badge for my works when I used to work. Sorry. And I look, I could use that picture on my profile. But that's just giving out a false representation of who I am. Because, well, I do look like that still, a little bit, just a bit older, just a little bit older. So, it is interesting, though, that picture. Anyway. No, don't want to see it. We've read all this the other night, so don't want to go through that again. Let's go down to the bottom. To this one. To this one. Now, I believe Declaration of Christina O'Donnell. You know, I didn't know who she was, but I found out today she, she is on TikTok, but she's also, I think she's come over to YouTube. Right? And this is quite a lot of pages. So sit down, get comfy, get yourself a drink. <clears throat> I have. I've got my Coke without my gin or my vodka or anything in it. I can't have nothing like that in it. God, I've got another three years before I can have a drink. A proper drink. Three years. Two years clear so far. Whoop, whoop. So, I've still got another three years of medication to be taking. All right. Is it? I've got that. Let's have a look. I've actually got that file. <laughs> yes, I've got that file. Um, everything. And it's at the end, isn't it? Being in, in the exhibits at the end. So he's still got quite a lot of hair. There, and he's, he hasn't really got that white beard. But then again, you could do it. You could have grown a white beard. But he's still got a, quite a lot of hair there.
that's like the same picture he used on there. Yeah. That picture on his ID is the same picture he's using in, on his uh, X account. This picture here, which is on his ID, is the same picture on his X account. But someone went into wherever, put the details in, his number in, and nothing came up. So that's interesting. So, anyway, we're looking at this, right? And she's got a lot to say, this woman. Christine O'Donnell, known as Chase and Crime. I watched her. I'm sure I've got her on my TikTok. I'm sure I have. I'm sure I follow her on TikTok. Residing at declaring a penalty of perjury under the laws of the Commonwealth Pennsylvania that the foregoing is true and correct to the best of my knowledge and belief. I hope you've all got a nice drink and you're all comfy. Oh, I just got to crack my back. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, just got to give me a side. Oh, yeah, that was it. Oh, get me head, do my head, get neck exercises to get me head all relaxed, yeah. Not so relaxed so that flops and hit me head on the mic and people think I'm nodding. Right? I have personal knowledge of the facts set forth in this declaration regarding the actions of barbecue lady, also known as, except, except as as set forth on information and belief, and to those facts I am informed and believe them to be true. If called as a witness in this action, I could and will testify competently and truthfully to such facts under oath. My question is... <laughs> <laughs> love it, love it, Karen. My question is to those on X and anyone watching on replay: Do you think this will actually go to trial, or do you think they will plead out and make some sort of whatever agreement? Because I'm sure it's barbecue lady she said she's fighting this. She's fighting it. I heard her say it the other day, um, what channel was she on? She come up and there was barbecue lady and granny watching, is he? And there was, who's, I'm not sure if it was Queen Bees or something like that. But like, she said she's fighting it. She said, oh, hell no, I'm fighting this, she said. I thought, oh, but I've also heard that they're now going after Channel 2 News. Yep, they're actually going after a TV channel. So good luck to them on that. You should wear a recent picture in your license to identify yourself as PR. Well, that picture. Right, see that picture there? Look at that picture here. It's the same picture there as is on his ID. Now, the question is, right, the question is, hold on. It might have been a recent picture when his ID was made. How long has his ID been? How long is, does his ID last? 
Let's see if it says on here. All right, let's just go back. I know I'm going back again, ladies and gents, because I want to see how long it lasts. If it says how long it lasts. Oh God, I've got to go all oh, past it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because if it's three years or five years or longer, then that's quite an oldish picture of him, you know what I mean? Oh, we've got to go right back up here. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. Check me. Where back is he? <clears throat> no, it's down here somewhere. I can't find it now. <laughs> right, I can't find it now. Oh no, Gary. Oh no. Right. So it's be after all this, so let's just have a look. Uh, No, I can't find it again. There's like 20 odd pages, I'm not looking through it all. Sorry. Let's just get back to where we was. But I'd like to know how long how, how long the license is run. I know it runs out next month from what I've seen on that picture. It runs out next month, so he's got to renew it next month. So in which case, he would have to put a new picture on. A new picture on. Right, but... Uh... 
Lads where she looked, she looked on the this the app for Tennessee PI Tennessee licensing or something like that. She looked on one of the, the apps for Tennessee licensing for PIs and his number didn't come up. So but I noticed on it it did say it runs out next month. So we've got to renew it in November. So when he renews it, you would have to put a new photo on. But if that is like, if if it's every three years, then that picture's three years old. If it's every five years, that picture's five years old. Because I actually asked my employer, because at the time I was thinking of having my hair cut short. And my hair was long, and I used to tie it back a lot. And that's why I was going to have it cut shortish. Right? And she took the photo when she came here to my home. Right? Because they interviewed at, at your home. Right? Because you're going as a... Oh, God, I can't remember. And well, the interview was going at home. And I said... What if I get my hair cut? It'll be different. Said, so, that's all right. She said, because we renew it every year, these anyway. Every year we take new photos. I said, yeah, but by the time you come round to in a year's time, if I have my hair cut now, cut next week, in a year's time, it could be long again. Yes, I thought that as well. And I also thought perhaps because his name was mentioned in this lawsuit, but he isn't being he isn't in the injunction. His name was just mentioned in the injunction. Right? Along with a lot of others. And I thought, is he doing this to get so that they do take him to court because then if they take him to court he's entitled to see all the evidence right but you see the thing is if they take him to court they want to see all of his evidence like the only, he only showed two exhibits but he went, on, he went on about a lot of stuff. And I'm going, where's your proof? Where's your proof? Show proof. Show proof. And that's what I was doing through this whole one section, one paragraph of his. It was going on, I'm not sure if it was about BHB, I think it was. And I was going, where's your proof? Where's your proof? Show your proof. But he's only shown two exhibits. Now, if he's got all this information, why didn't he put them in as the exhibits? So, it just makes me wonder. And now, all of a sudden, he's not going to be able to talk about this case for a while because he's got some work lined up and he's planning on trying to get back in the next couple of weeks. So, he's going to go quiet for a couple of weeks on this. It says it in his S oh, in here, on his page. Just to be clear, I did not say I was the only one really looking for Sebastian. I did not do interview. They are employing. Oh, this was a one hour ago. So this is new. Hold on, everyone. I'm going to share this. Just to be clear, I did not say I was the only one really looking for Sebastian. I did not do an interview. They are implying that from my filing. In my filing, I stated that legitimate search teams and some some like EMI, TBI, FCR, X search and others were searching. Yes, I I thought at first he said he worked with them. Then I reread it and I thought, no, what he's saying is all these teams were there. We know that, right? 
research, not to mention Crabtree, Clue, and Clutus, and others that are publicly shared or searching with. I said that none of the legitimate search teams for climate interference, including myself. Well, you're not going to get the interference, are you? Because you're pally pally with Clue and Clutus and whoever else you're pally pally with. And some uh, else. I was reading one testimony. Uh, one, what was it? The um, ceasing to cease. I think it was ceasing to cease, and I think it was to clue. And it said that she was related to Chris Proudfoot and Katie Proudfoot. I went, whoop, go back again, and Yes, it said that you're related. So it's got it in there that she's related to them. So yes, she's going to be very, very pally pally to them now, isn't she? Perhaps she didn't know at first. She could be a distant, distance relation. You know what I mean? And it was only when she was on that four-hour phone call with them that his probably came and said, do you know you're related? We're related. And she's probably going, no, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, sick and sick and blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? Because all of a sudden, after that four-hour phone call she had with Chris and Katie, she suddenly changed from, oh, Seth is a shame for Seth, to, oh, it's a shame for Chris and Katie. Seth's a big whatever. You know what I mean? She suddenly changed. Sides, and I was signed up to her. I've subscribed to her as soon as she did that. I went, Yep, and I uns unsubscribed to her. But you're not having my following. Let's just see what this says. Mm. Private investigator responds to injunction for Sebastian Robert, Rob, Rogers' father, dog, the bounty hunter. <laughs> because he did make it sound like he'd worked with them. But then I thought, no, why would they need him? You know what I mean? And now they're going after Channel 2 because they keep putting stories out about S Sebastian. Yeah, the little minions, the little minions are going after Channel 2. But good luck. Because they will take you to court. And you won't have a leg to stand on. Right. Oh, you guys not seen that. Sorry. <laughs> she looks like Kathy Babasox, does she? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I know. But I didn't know. But I thought, wow. I literally had to go back and read it like three times before it actually sunk in. I thought, I'm not reading it wrong. I haven't worded it wrong. Because sometimes, you know, when you read something, you can literally skip past words, yeah? So I went back and made sure I didn't skip any words. So, you know, one this is all pally pally with Chris. Um, no, I'm not. Shall I try and find it on the exhibits? It be at oh god. Mm. Right, let's go to the beginning. And then I can work my way down. Alright. Because I know I read it and I thought, are you joking? She's related to it.
Oh, damn. But I've got every bit of information that was ever put out. Right? About Sebastian Rogers. They've got every bit of information from the news people, TV people, everything. Uh, hold on. Oh, come on. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> oh. Sorry about that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Alright. You know what I mean? All the pictures, everything. And they've got 323 pages of exhibits. And all he could exhibit was two items. And one was his PI investigator's ID card. And one was something else I can't remember now. But it is in here. And I'm sure it's in one of the ceasing to cease letters which they've got in here. So. I'm just trying to find it for you all now so that you can see it for yourself. But like I said, if you want to, to get, download the whole document, just go into my Discord account. Click on that link and it will take you straight to the page where the link is that you click on. And when you click on that link, it will take you to p two PDFs. Mm. It's like people are saying, well, what's this got to do with Sebastian Rogers? It's got a lot to do with Sebastian Rogers, Rogers because it's these people that are doing intimidation and cyberbullying. And like I said, I was watching... Uh, what's her name? I can't think of her name. I was watching a, um, allegedly, in my opinion, whatever her name is. Right? And Ricky Smith. Ricky Smith. Here it is. Who's Ricky Smith? Who's Ricky Smith? And the address is somewhere in Gallatin, Tennessee. So who's Ricky Smith? Right. Defendant Ricky Smith related to Christopher and Katie Proudfoot. Sebastian's stepfather and mother, respectfully, has engaged in reckless, defamatory and obstructive actions. These include initiating an online smear campaign, 
disseminating false information. Oh, go. I'm not sharing this. Here we are now. Who's Ricky Smith? You think it's, I think it, you think it's claiming at him. Well, if that's the case, this is what it says. Defendant Ricky Smith related to Christopher and Katie Crayful. So I should imagine it's to Christopher, otherwise I could put Katie first. Has engaged in reckless, defamatory and obstructive, obstructive actions. These include initiating an online smear campaign, disseminating false information, making racially charged statements against Mr. Hong. And I think that's what made me think it was Clue. Because we know she did say that and she, I watched her once, once, once and she said, I'm not going to back down from it. It is who I am. If you don't like it, tough luck sort of, sort of thing. You know what I mean? Right. So when I read that bit, making racially charged statements against Mr. Hong, <coughs> she's the one who came <coughs> came up in my mind. An exciting, exciting harassment and threats against Dwayne Dog Chapman and other plaintiffs. Defendant Smith has further disrupted the search for Sebastian by inciting the public to flood tip lines and law enforcement with false reports. <coughs> yep. <coughs> to divert invaluable resources from legitimate search efforts, defendant's actions have severely undermined the, incredi the credibility of the search and caused essential resources to withdraw from participation. Right. On or about September 70, defendant was served with a demand to cease and desist, which included a notice stating, failure to comply with this demand within 48 hours of receiving this notice will result in legal proceedings in federal court. The time has lapsed and defendant has shown neither respect nor any intent to comply with the demand. A true and correct copy of the cease and desist demand is attached to and incorporated. Right? Uh, she's made, she's done, called uh, a client, an R, R-A-P-I-S-T. She made racial remarks against Mr. Hong. I'm not going to say what she called him. Rather inflaming public sentiment and damaging reputations. Hate, yeah, that would come under the Hate Crimes Prevention Act. Ethnic intimidation. That's what I love about the, the US. When, when they have an act, when they charge someone with something, yeah, they can then break it down to, oh, John, she said this, oh, that's a hate crime. Oh, she said that. that's an ethnic. You know what I mean? Not in the UK. Not in the UK, it's just, oh, you said that, okay, slap on your hand, don't say it again. You know what I mean? Oh, Joe, oh, just the systems. We just had one guy die in prison. Die in prison just for holding a placard, placard with some writing on. Nothing inflammatory about it, nothing nasty about it, just saying his opinions. And be giving, saying hurty words to the police. Hurty words to the police and hurty words to some illegal immigrants that were in a hotel. About some illegal immigrants in a hotel. He got two years, eight months. He just killed himself, so they say. But we know he's in a prison where there's a high majority of ethnic minority group of people. And his life would have been how? So did he commit suicide or was it something else? We don't know. But 
Yeah, he's a grandfather. He's 61 years old. He's had heart trouble. He's just come out of... He's not long had an operation. Right? He has anxiety or asthma or something like that. And they sent him down for two years, eight months, for saying some hurty words to the police. I'm sure the police have heard a lot worse than what he said. Because I could tell him a few more words than what he said. You know what I mean? Pull your big boy pants up the place and down in London. Right, so let's carry on. Because we do have... Um, Oh. It's going to go on forever. But yeah, Ricky is clue. Okay. So they found that out that she's um, related. And I think it's to Chris's family. Right, because I was just, what, or oh, what, Re you know what I mean? I did she not know she was related to him, because she was all safe at the beginning. Then all of a sudden she has a four-hour phone call with Chris, and then she's all pally-pally with Chris and Katie. It, I just don't understand that. Anyway, get back to this, because I really want to get through this. Bit out the... Oh. And what they put through Valanti through, Valanti, she could lose her job. Do they not know that? She could lose her position as a captain in the army. She could be kicked out of the forces. Is that what they want? It's disgusting how they're going after them. Whether it's them in person or their little minions. <coughs> so. Right. right, we're here, we're here. Go back to you. Right, let's just take another sip of my kooky cooler. Be a lot nicer with some vodka in. Really would. Shit, can't have vodka. Has anyone ever made an alcohol? Free vodka or an alcohol free gin that tastes like vodka and tastes like gin but without the, without the alcohol in it. That would be interesting to find out because if there is, then I'm going to buy a bottle. <laughs> you get alcohol free lager, so why can't you get alcohol free gin or alcohol free vodka? It's really not fair, that isn't. Right. I'll start from here. No, right, I'll start from here. Since April 2024, Miss Took has participated in a coordinated campaign of harassment, slander, defamation and bullying directed at me and others. Miss Took maintains a private Discord server specifically used to organise efforts to dox individuals and coordinate harassment against them. Well, yeah, Discord, it's like I put the link, like, you know when you're on Discord, you can open up separate pages, but all to the same account, yeah? I've got one for Sebastian Rogers, one for Sean Diddy Coombs, 
and one for Elijah Vu. And then there's my general, where if I'm sending anyone just as an invite, that's where I send them. But if I'm covering a case like Sebastian, I put that link, the link to the Sebastian one, in the page, on the page. So yeah, you can have separate chats, you can have voice chat ones. So, so I could quite easily believe she has a Discord server specifically used. Right. On February 26th, I began covering the case of Sebastian Rogers. Shortly after Miss Truth also started covering the case, and her pl platform became a source of significant misinformation. As individuals moved between TikTok live streams, my platform and I had to regularly debunk and correct this misinformation. The situation it escalated on April 7, 2024, when Ocean and I called out a fraudulent medium. While we did not mention Miss Truth, she took offence to the correction of misinformation and began her harassment campaign. Following this, Miss Truth systematically targeted me, Ocean, and anyone else associated with my platform for harassment. Oh God. My phone, my watch is telling me I've got a stand up, but I'm not. I've been sitting down for too long. For example, Miss Trude would stream live broadcast and manipulate the content, distorting the narrative with false and harmful commentary. Additionally, she orchestrated efforts to send her followers into my live streams to report, dox, harass, and troll my broadcasts. On April 17th, 24, Miss True doxed me. Fully aware of my background as a trafficking survivor. Oh, God. She's a feck. She's survived trafficking and they go out and dox her. Oh. After the direct harassment towards me subsided, Miss Truth shifted her focus to target a variety of other individuals, including those who were mentally vulnerable. I made it a point to stand up against all forms of bullying and harassment on behalf of these individuals on my platform. In retaliation, Miss Truth sent her direct messages, sent me direct messages encouraging me to take my own life. And I'm sure she's got that proof. While attacking my physical appearance, parenting, sobriety and relationship status. Wow. On multiple occasions, Miss Truth and her associates have exploited the loss of my child to bully, to bully and harass me. I lost my first child to six on my 20... Oh, God. She gets through trafficking. She's a survivor of a traf trafficking gang. She gets through that. And she loses her first child to seeds on her 28th birthday. An event that caused me great trauma, of which Miss Trude is fully aware. They have used this trauma to attack me both in their own live sessions and in the comment sections of mine. One of my Miss Trude's associates even made posts regarding the loss of my child. Some followers of barbecues sent direct messages suggesting that I should not mention my grief if I did not want it used against me. Just because she mentions something, it doesn't mean you can use it against her. You know what I mean? During my absence from the platform, due to this struggling time, they continue to use this trauma to attack me, both during my absence and upon my return. Additionally, her followers have harassed. Oh, God. Hold on. Okay. Oh, God. It just gets unbelievable, this is. You know what I mean? When Tony, uh, Tony initially appeared. No, no, go. 
Her followers also asked individuals who appeared with me on TikTok, including some of Miss Truth's own moderators. So, they even had a go at Miss Truth's own moderators because they was up on her panel. After a brief period of quiet, Tony became involved in the situation. Tony initially appeared on my platform but later participated in a live stream on Miss Truth's platform. When Tony returned to my platform, Miss Truth requested that he return to hers, which he declined. Following this, Miss True claimed that Tony would no longer be allowed on her platform due to messages from others advising against it. However, it's clear that she made the claim only, only after Tony rejected her request to appear on her platform. From this point onwards, the harassment and bullying against me escalated significantly. Could it get any worse? Could it get any worse, Sam? She's a traffic survi trafficking survivor. And she had a baby who died of SIDS. On her twenty can it get any worse? Miss True continued to stream nearly all of my live broadcasts, making harassing comments, twisting my words and pushing outrageous narratives and that discrediting me. It's true because I'll tell you something else. When something like that happens, right? People think, you know what, I'm not going to associate with that channel. Too much drama going on. Too much of this, too much of that. So people pull away from channels. I admit it. I did it myself. I thought, I admit, you know what I mean? I think myself, I pulled away from channel because I think there's too much drama. And even now, I go back to that channel to see how it's getting on. And there's still drama going on. So, I pull away again. <sighs> On April 17, 2024, while streaming my live broadcast to her followers, Miss Truth openly admitted to doxing me. She gave her address out online on a TikTok live or wherever it was of a survivor of trafficking. A trafficking survivor. It's like say you say say you use R A P E D, right? And you moved out of the state and moved across to the say you was on the south coast you went to the north coast yeah to get so that the person who r-a-p-e-d you you wouldn't find you you change your name yeah you change everything but then someone puts out just some research and finds out hold oh, on that isn't her true name Oh, darn, she used to live in this state and puts it all out on there. But look where she's living now and puts that out on there. That's going to let that person who R-A-P-E-D her in the first place know where she is now. What the hell? Video evidence of this admission exists on Ocean's YouTube channel. In the video, Miss Truth's exact words were, we just doxed, followed by a pause when she seemed to realise what she had said, after which she claimed, doxing is not illegal. It is. Oh, God. Miss True continued to mock. What's, that, what's it called when, you know, when people call out that there's a situation uh, there, and someone's being held at their own against their will? And they call out all the fire, uh, firearm police and all that lot. And they come barging into your house. What's that called? Swatting. When they call out the SWAT team and whatever. It's called swatting. 
I'm surprised. I'm not, I'm not even going to say it. I'm not saying it. I'm not saying it. I'm not going there. I'm not going there. Like to see create the fake account specifically designed to bully me about my past as a trafficking survivor and to mock my trauma. As the followers flooded my chat to ask me, I stated, here comes, here comes her monkeys. Hmm. I wouldn't say that. I, if someone was to, you know, if someone wanted to harass me and come on my channel, do so. Keep putting the nasty comments up, I'd say. Keep doing it. Because I don't see the comments when I'm reading, right? So people can put up nasty comments. Don't bother me. Because the more nasty comments that come up, A, I'll just screenshot them all. And B, it's just helping my channel even more, you know what I mean? Because it means I'm getting more views on my channel. Yeah? So keep doing it, I'd say. I call them the little minions. After April the 17th, Miss True continued to host multiple lives, live streams in which she falsely accused me of being racist and using slurs such as window, oh god, window, oh god, I can't even say it now. However, the term window was originally used by one of her own followers in another creator's live stream, Summer Love Creations. I was not present during the live stream where the term was used. On April 29, 2024, Miss True responded to a comment on one of her TikTok posts falsely stating that I, ha that I had doxed her. The comment said, I thought you should know Chase is on live doxing you. Hmm. In response to that comment, Miss Trude made a post falsely implying that I had indeed doxed her. This accusation is entirely, entirely, false, entirely false, and Miss Trude knew it was untrue at the time she made the post. Despite knowing the truth, she encouraged her followers to harass me based on this information. Later during a live stream hosted by LVM, M. Trude admitted, LVM, Miss Trude admitted that I had not doxed her and, uh, and offered an apology in the chat. Even after this admission, Miss True continued to spread the false claim that I had doxed her, inciting further hatred and harassment from her followers. On May 14, Seth and Tony appeared on Pascal's YouTube channel during which Miss True made numerous defamatory accusations. During this time, Miss True directed harassing comments towards me, Seth and Tony, as soon in provided screenshot. An account under the name Christina Miller sent a super chat stating, BBQ Barbecue Lady must be nice, must be nice to have $10 to spare to start drama on YouTube. Wow. Referencing an early incident involving Miss True and her daughter's prom dress. <sighs> Previously, Miss True had publicly bullied her daughter during a live stream because her prom dress did not fit. Really? Hmm. Miss Trude accused me of being behind the Christine Miller account and hosted multiple live streams accused me of using the account to harass her. At one point, Miss Trude stated that she did not care whether or not it was actually me behind the account, even though her followers had told her otherwise. Despite knowing this, she continued to host live streams accusing me of being involved with the account. During the Pascal show, Miss Trude sent multiple super chats making defamatory claims about Seth and Tony. Yeah, because when you go on a YouTube channel, right, you send a super chat, they will read them comments out first because you paid money for them, right? So they always read the super chats out first. So 
you want if you want a comment read, you'll send it in a super chat. To uh sent multiple super chats making defamatory claims about Seth and Tony. I'm going to have to watch that again, you know. She also falsely told her thousands of followers that Seth and Tony are praying me to participate in the campaign. I have no who'd like me to play on another live, not tonight. Who'd like me to go back over that, find that live where Tony and Seth are on it just to see these super chats being put up? Because I remember that live. Right? But I, I don't take notice of the super chats. I really don't. I really don't take notice of the super chats. Miss True quite frequently, I have never received compensation in any form for raising awareness or assisting in Sebastian's case. Oh, she was falsely told to her thousands of followers that Seth and Tony were paying me to participate in this campaign. They can pay me if they want. I won't tell no one. <laughs> right. Miss True frequently twists facts to construct misleading and false narratives for her followers. It's all about clicks. Clicks and likes, right? Now, as I said, some people may not like Bullhorn Betty. I'm not particularly keen on her. Right? I think she can be a bit brash and say some stupid things and do some stupid things. But that doesn't mean it entitles others to constantly harass and cyber bully and intimidate her and threats, send threats to her, you know what I mean? That doesn't give them the entitlement to do that. And that's why I support Betty now, because it's not just Betty, there's hundreds of people out there probably on YouTube who are being threatened by other YouTubers, you know what I mean? Covering another case maybe. And they just haven't got the people who they can turn to to get the support. Mr. Misleading and false narratives for her followers who then act on her misleading claims. In the second week of May, Miss True told live streams accusing Seth of misusing GoFundMe and Cash App donations. I remember someone talking about that talking about how it was on a YouTube channel because as I said I don't go on TikTok I don't well I do use TikTok right but it's normally on my phone you know what I mean I don't watch anything to do with crime on my on TikTok it's just cats and dogs and all the unicorns and beautiful butterflies and flowers everywhere that's the sort of thing I like to watch right after doing something like this reading something like this I tend to, when I switch off, I go and watch YouTube, but I watch some like outdoor camping programs because I love, I used to go camping from a young child. Even when my kids were little, we used to go camping. And I just love camping and I love watching them shows. And I've got this other one I watch who's got a motorhome and they travel all around the UK, Scotland, uh, Europe. You know what I mean? And I love to watch that because it's just so relaxing. Right. But I remember him talking about it going for me and I'm thinking, well, even if... You know what I mean? It's up to Seth. His sister opened that go for me to help Seth with a rent. And people are going, but how did they know it would be so long? He could have been back in a week. It could have been, in which case the go from me would have stopped. You know what I mean? 
But in the meantime, he needed help with fuel. Um, travelling, like for travelling to do the uh, whatever. He needed money for that. He needed money for t-shirts and all that lot. And then eventually he needed it for his rent, for internet, for whatever else you have to pay, your, your bills. You know what I mean? So I just thought it was wrong. When people donate, like people, I donate to that. Well, you donated in good faith. Thank you for donating, you know what I mean? But don't take, oh, well, he's wasting it. You don't know what he's doing with that money. You don't know. So, for this meeting, Miss Truth had stated on her last stream that she planned to secretly record their interaction. Oh no, oh, I remember this bit as well. Hold oh, on, yeah. number 45 here. Miss Truth also bullied Seth, claiming that she had paid for their dinner when they met in Tennessee. Oh, John, didn't turn it, or Seth paid for that dinner. I think it was Seth, wasn't it? Before this meeting, Miss True just stated on her live stream that she planned to secretly record the interaction. Yep, yeah, I've got a little handheld little mic, microphone, uh, record, little handheld recorder. My son said, what you got that for? I said, well, what it was, I was, I was typing up some transcripts, and some transcripts, you can't get the um, subtitles on. So what I did, I recorded the recordings on here. So then I could listen to it and then stop it when I needed to. You know what I mean? So that's why I brought it for. On my live stream, live stream, I explained that it would be unethical to record someone without their knowledge. It is. Well, it is in America. I don't know what it is in the UK. I did say I was going to check up on it and I haven't. While she was in Tennessee, Miss True continued to hold live streams, claiming that I and Queen, who regularly appears on my panel, were downgrading her efforts by only passing out two flyers. That night, Miss True held a live stream that lasted until 3 a.m harassing Ocean and calling her into the lodge to confront her. Ocean received a message from Miss Truth asking why we were undermining her efforts. Ocean responded, stated that we had never said, ma never made such comments and warned Miss Truth about listening to individuals who might be trying to, to create drama. Ocean also clarified to Miss Truth that we had publicly praised her efforts in Tennessee. Ocean suggested that in the future, Miss Truth should reach out directly to us if she had concerns, rather than taking grievances to social media. It's true. Despite this, Miss Truth went live shortly after and publicly summoned Ocean to reprimand her for allegedly playing, for allegedly downplaying her contributions. Hmm. She encouraged her followers to tag Ocean in the live stream so she could reprimand her in front of a wider audience. Is she, is she for real? After returning home, Miss True continued to hold live streams falsely, falsely claiming that they were disappearing in her efforts, disparaging her efforts in Tennessee. She also criticised the meeting with Seth, describing him as weird and belittling the short amount of time they spent together. Miss True denied that she had ever said she would secretly record Seth calling it a lie. A week later, on another live stream, Miss True claimed the Midwest, another creator who, had, who was not present in Tennessee, had overheard the entire converse, conversation referring to Midwest as a fly on the wall. During this time and continued to be present, Miss True has held numerous live streams where she has bullied me and made various false accusations. She publicly discussed my recovery, falsely claiming that I am, am meth, 
and has encouraged followers to harass me by making references to drug use. Miss Truth has also accused me of seeking money and being desperate for funds simply because I thank people who sent gifts during my live streams, even gifts as small as one cent. As a result, she began calling me, chasing minions, mocking my financial situation. You know what? I, you know, I said I call all those people who did the harassing and the bullying and intimidation minions. minions. I'm going to <laughs> put some little minions up on my channels for people to use when they become a member. Well, when they, yeah, when they become a member, they can use them then. Then they can put little minions, lucky little minions up about people like this rather than use the word. I'm going to do that. Miss True told her followers to flood my chat with comments about the Chasing Penny's narrative she was pushing. She continued making racing comments about my finances during her live stream. Miss True also encouraged her followers to put my live stream so that they would be taken down. Additionally, she instructed her followers to report my videos, including content related to Kayla Paris and Sebastian Rogers' case. Miss True began making degrading comments about my weight, telling me to get off the couch and calling me a couch potato. Hmm. I sat on the couch all day. My my couch calls me. It sees me get up in the morning and go into the kitchen and it calls my name. So once I get my coffee, I plonk my backside on my sofa and I don't move for a couple of hours. Until at least I've drank my first cup of coffee. Then I have to move because I need to go and get another cup of coffee. Right? So my sofa knows me personally. By name. It calls my name, my sofa just. I did say, I said at one stage to my son and daughter, I said, I'm getting rid of my sofa. They're still there. What are you getting? I said, I'm not getting a sofa. He said, why not? I said, because if I've got a sofa, I sit on it all day. I don't do nothing. I get up, make a coffee, sit on my couch, couch sofa, watch TV, get only go up to go to the toilet, right, to get washed and dressed and whatever, or to go make another coffee. That's the only times I'll get off my sofa. I said, so I'm getting rid of my sofa, that way I can't sit on my sofa. And my son said, well, where will I sit then when I come, Mum? I said, on the floor, where I'd be sitting, you know what I mean? And... I said, you can't do that. You've got to get another sofa. I said, no, that sofa is so comfy. I'm not getting rid of it. That's my go-to place. When I can't sleep on the night time in my bed, I get up, get the blanket, my throw off my black bed, and I bring it through to the living room. I get my cushions on the sofa, and I fall asleep. Within five minutes on the sofa, I'm fast asleep. But I've just spent two hours in my bedroom, tossing and turning, trying to go to sleep. So I'm not getting rid of that sofa. Sorry. Miss Truth also falsely stated during the live stream that I had a rash. Oh God. Harassment. Fucking mate. Harassment charges against me, which is completely untrue. I have a clean record. She went on to criticise my parenting, falsely claiming that I sleep all day and neglect my child because of my leg drug use. After I mentioned that I'd fallen asleep while putting my five-year-old autistic son to bed. I've done that many times when my grandson has been here. Especially when he was about four and five. And he used to like us to lie on the bed with him. Right? I would fall asleep. I used to do it with my own son. I did it with my own daughter. So, i fall asleep. My son... My husband used to say, I said, like, we take it in turns taking the kids to bed. I go, come on now, son, let's go to bed. So we go up to bed and my husband said, see you about three hours then. He knew I'd fall asleep on the bed with him. He knew he. The constant harassment severely impacted my mental health, forcing me to cancel several live streams intended to raise awareness about Sebastian's case. Miss Drew streamed my live content and used it as a platform to continue a bullying campaign against me and others. 
At one point, an old, an account called Harley Guy entered Miss Truth's chat, asking her to stop speaking about their child, prompting Miss Truth to instruct her followers to confront the individual. To this day, we do not know who operated the Harley Guy account. However, Miss Truth falsely accused Seth of running the account and proceeded to bully and harass the individual, assuming it was Seth. Later, Miss Truth falsely accused Tony, Ocean, and myself of operating the Harley, Car- Harley Guy account, claiming she had proof of our association with it. This statement is false. We have no knowledge of who owns that account. During the live stream, Miss Truth recorded a phone call with Tony, which is illegal since she resides in a state that requires two party consent for recording. She accused him of operating both the Harley Guy account and separate trial page. Additionally, she accused both me and Ocean of being involved in the management of these accounts. Once again, none of the accused have any knowledge of who operates those accounts. Furthermore, on later dates, Miss Truth admitted to recording additional calls between herself and Tony. She also recorded without consent a phone con- conversation between herself and an individual known as a Doc. This recording was later played live for her follow- followers. Seth had to release a video clarifying that the Harley Guy account was not his and he does not have a TikTok account. He doesn't. The only account he's got is a YouTube account. That's the only account he's got. Later, Miss Truth falsely accused Tony of me uh, of operating the Harley Guy. During a live stream, Miss Truth recorded a phone call accusing him of running the both Harley Guy and separate job face. She accused me of being in. Oh, God. This is just as bad. In May 2024, I witnessed Miss True target and harass, harass other DV survivors. During one live stream, Miss True mocked a DV survivor in front of hundreds of people, making fun of the woman's scar from a domestic violence incident. Really? During that same live stream, Miss Drew stated, If people are going to call me bully, I will be a bully. She also harassed and bullied another individual about their experience as a DV survivor. This individual confided in, her, in others about how much her mental health had deteriorated due to Miss Drew's harassment. As a DV violence survivor myself and someone with. So she's not only a sex traffic. Survivor, she's a DV survivor, so she's obviously come out of sex trafficking, got into domestic violence relationship. So she's a survivor of that. As a domestic violence survivor myself, and someone who mistreated has also rushed and mocked for my past, I felt compelled to stand up for the victims of mistreated relentless bullying. In response, I held a live stream focusing on anti bullying. By this point, the bullying of individuals both on and off social media platforms escalated to disturbing levels. At time, at least a handful of individuals were being targeted by Miss Truth. And you know what? We get the gist of that. We get the gist. That is just sick. And... Obviously, they've got the proof of what was being said and done, like it's on being on live shows, you know what I mean? So, people download lives, especially on TikTok, because when you do a live on TikTok, it disappears. It doesn't stay up on the channel. It disappears. So, to, you have to download it at the time it's happening. Right? So, that is, I'm going to see what else comes after that in case I miss anything. I don't want to miss anything. Because she said, it goes on. Look at the pages, it goes on. 
15, 16. It goes on and on. This poor woman and all those others. Her daughter is frequently in the background of BBQ's live streams, participating in the harassment and bullying of others. Her daughter has even made videos with false accusations against individuals, including Seth and Tony. Really? And she bullies her own daughter, and yet her daughter's doing it back. Since her daughter's a minor, her people are led to believe that she's being attacked, but this is simply another manipulation tactic used by BBQ. Her daughter has never been attacked, it's just another strategy that barbecue uses to manipulate others as part of her broader hate campaign. I've also been subjected to continuous cyber harassment where threats to my life and safety have become more frequent and severe. Look at 21, 22 pages, right? Literally 23 pages, well, say 22 pages of her testimony. 22 pages. That is a hell of a lot. Oh. It just makes me sick to think there's people that do that. Why do they do this? It doesn't make... Right? So, I'm going to take this off. It doesn't make sense for anyone to do this. Why are they so nasty? Why are there some people out there that are so nasty? I know I can be nasty. But that's only if you go after my kids or my grandkids. Then I'll be in the hell, hell down on you if anyone came after my, my two kids and my grandkids. They wouldn't know what happened to them. But to go after someone just because they don't like, just because they're pulling you up on your misinformation. You shouldn't be putting misinformation out there anyway. I know Tony did at one stage. He did put misinformation out there. But that was his own stupid fault. He should have fact-checked it first because he got it off some other guy, another YouTuber, who's been mentioned in, the, in that. He got it off him and instead of doing his due diligence and checking it first, he didn't, he ran with it. Right. So, just makes me sick knowing this, that there are people out there that would do that. Right. I'm going, I'll see if I can pull up that. Oh. Let's just see. This is the, it's the right channel, Bob. Uh, Uh. 
I don't know if this is the one. No, I can't find you. Oh, well. Um, perhaps I can find you another night, another day, when I'm a bit more awake. But I'm going to leave it there. So please, if you like what you're seeing and you heard, please give this video a like. Please share, please comment. Subscribe, it's all for free. And you can now become a member. Yep, you can now become a member. You can do all that silly stuff as well. I'm going to put some minions up there for the members to use in the chat. And I'm going to see if I can get something for, like, instead of putting a YouTube creator's name up, use, like, a picture with just a uh, like, picture and then Maybe their first letter of their name. So that I know you're talking about a, a YouTuber without saying their name. So anyway, I'm going to call it a night. I've got to go and take my medication and go to bed. My cats have been quiet tonight. They've not been fighting. So until... What day is it tomorrow, Thursday? I'll be on again tomorrow. So until then, I'll see you all. Just trying to find a song to go back with. Mm -hmm. no, I think I'll come out with that one. I don't ever slow up, no I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this I'll always show up and make a statement I don't ever slow up, no I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this I'll always show up and make a statement Everything I do, so instinctive and so passionate Every word I move, so descriptive like an adjective I got a vendetta against people who patented it Being negative when you should be getting after it I got facts over facts over tracks This and that, spitting slow, spitting fast I could roast, I could gas, think I'm okay at last But I don't know if that can erase all the past And the pettiness of reflecting hilarious You think you're with my time, you're delirious Mysterious because you are behind the fake exterior And you know stay I'm safe. Get off of me, this ain't no humble brag I want you to hear words, you can say them back I want you to feel free from the chains at last And to believe in what you got, it was built to last, yeah Now that I've been put through I never got anyone's help I had to do it all myself